Hi there, my name is George and today I'm gonna run down again the top 10 news of my islands, Philippine Islands. Number 10. Um, one of the things that really surprised me today was this site, Guru Focus. I know that I've seen this before, but then I now realize that there are many things that you can see here. For example, um, this is not a paid uh, thing for me, you know. I just saw this and there's a get seven day free trial and all that. I'm sure it's gonna be dear if you pay for this, but there are many things already that are here that we need in order to uh, analyze a stock or something. Like here, I'm analyzing Microsoft, and you can enter ticker here. For example, you want to analyze uh, McDonald's, just enter your ticker code. And then it will give you their analysis and there are many things that you can see here like for example they're analyzing the financial strength of the company here the financial strength is 4 out of 10 uh, cash to debt uh, equity to asset debt to equity I mean, we have seriously we should have something like this in our in in the in you know in PSEI profitability rank 9 out of 10 uh, valuation rank 1 out of 10 why PE ratio is 23 versus industry is just uh, bigger forward PE ratio PE ratio without NRI price to owner earnings PS ratio very small and so on so you know and I noticed that there's also something like uh, which is the first time that I see uh, maybe uh, you know something like this uh, I'm not aware of this uh, of course there are financials dividends valuation and return uh, Peter Lynch chart I'm not aware of this I mean you know I've, I know Peter Lynch I know the PEG ratio came from him but I'm not aware of this maybe they're just analyzing the earn Peter Lynch earnings line because he used to recommend that it's not only him I think it's also Benjamin Graham with uh, P about 15 to 17 something like that price at medium PE without NRI you know that so they are tracking whether you are within that line or above or something so you know just uh, you can see a lot of things that are here that are really data based it's not analyst you know rating and all that uh, of course there is part here there's a part here about that like guru trades number of guru buys number of guru sales and all that. you can just uh, you know avoid looking at that because uh, maybe it will not interest you but if you want to follow them then maybe you can do that as well but this is really something I mean this is imagine all of this for free i mean you know you can see it for free and there are also 30 year history but of course i can't see it i can't see this without uh subscribing uh because you know <laughs> imagine all this and without subscribing uh so i think they can only see they can only show you about four or three or four years or something but that's it you know uh but still you know there are so many things that you can see in this site Number eight, Muhammad Ali and Rocky Marciano full fight. Here, Muhammad Ali got knocked out by Rocky Marciano. Rocky Marciano knocking out uh, Muhammad Ali. I don't know if this is the, the place where he got knocked out, but this is the 13th round. Yes. And that is, I think, where it ended. Or maybe it, it you know, continued for some time. Let's watch. Jesus Christ. Oh, no. He... Well, I think this is the one. But remember, remember that Rocky Marciano is bloodied all over. And Muhammad Ali is is just just fighting to survive that's round 12 and the last round is this one when he got knocked down by knocked out actually
Imagine. And according to, let's just watch it before you know. I think it's gonna be. Yes, that's where it is. That's where it happens. See the 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 amazing thing about this fight is that it never really happened. I mean, this was just according to them. This was just um, um, you know a computer generated song. I don't know. And some of the people here commenting said, "How did they do that with 1960s technology?" And I find some of the comments here funny. In sense that, like uh, Stanley Kubrick faked this one before he faked the clay and rocks on the moon, and you know, um, in reality, again, this is this never happened. But I remember that this uh, was mentioned to me by my father when I was still young, saying, you know, they did they did this computer generated thing and then muhammad ali lost to rocky marshall because we were really a, a big muhammad ali fan and that's why that was the first time i heard about rocky marshall rocky marshall never lost the fight and then he was uh being asked to you know to fight somebody else but then uh, you know come out of retirement because he was never lost and then his plane crashed and that's it he never he never fought again so he never lost he is the only um, heavyweight champion that uh, never lost but i find this amazing i mean i know that this that this did not happen but i i watched it in full i mean all this one hour in full, I watch this because I, I I I'm a great fan of of Ali. I'm also a great fan of the uh, Brockton Blockbuster. Is that the one that said you know? But whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of Rocky Marshall. And some comments here that says, oh, it's like watching Rocky and uh, you know this guy from Rocky Balboa, Apollo Creed. Yes, right. So you know this is amazing. I mean, imagine staging something like this and there's some some of the comments said that no it did not happen it's just that they staged the fight and they just uh, filmed them uh, you know uh, one round just a couple of first rounds something like that but still if you watch the full film it's you you gotta be uh, amazed that it it happened but this is like 70s or something right and i know that this uh, this can never be done in, in that technology. It says here it's 60s technology, but I think this is 70s, not 60s, because uh, um, in 60s, well, of course, uh, Muhammad Ali was still called uh, Cassius Clay as he was here. But then if you will notice here, there are many things here that were said like, it was fake. Uh, Ali, as they sparred about 75 one male rounds to make up what you see. A computer too that took into account all types of information came to the conclusion that Barshana would win. In the US version of the fight, Barshana was shown to win. In the Europe, they had Ali winning. I don't know. This computerized nonsense was done 49 years ago back in the day, 1970. Barshana had been dead for almost 50 years now. Ali almost years. I don't know. Uh, but you know this is amazing. I mean, discovering this only now. My father used to to tell this to me all the time. Uh, somehow during my time, I, I you know I, there was even a time that I almost not believe him. I mean, how, how can that be? Uh, but then I'm seeing it now, and you know apparently it's true. Number eight, we have everything announced at Microsoft Build 2020. Microsoft announces project reunion to make Windows app development easier again. Uh, Microsoft new fluid office document. And they're saying this is like Google Docs on steroids. Stick around for that. Open AI supercomputer collaboration with Microsoft marks its biggest bet yet on AGI. 
or the Artificial General Intelligence. Microsoft targeting healthcare industry with a new cloud offering. Uh, Microsoft enables team app development in Visual Studio. It usually comes out, you know, when I open my my Windows on my old laptop. When I sign into to Windows, um, it just installs in my old computer so microsoft team uh, microsoft edge and windows 10 will soon let you uninstall web apps the way you would regular software yes they're very big on that microsoft quantum computing platform is now in limited preview microsoft launches the project bonsai an ai development platform and industrial system microsoft is bringing linux gui apps to windows 10 wow and HoloLens 2 heads to South Korea, Taiwan, and more countries. I haven't heard of that yet. But uh, these are the things that were announced in Microsoft Build 2020. Okay, number seven, Cambridge University is the first to announce that online lectures will remain in place until 2021. It said that it's likely to be followed by many others. Uh, here we are presented with uh, Leah Belsky of Coursera, the new normal of online education. She shared her thoughts. Um, I think it's also happening here in the Philippines. Uh, although the problem here is connection, connectivity of some of our learners. But I always say uh, our our education managers that UN already declared connectivity as one of the basic human rights. And I think the government should step up a lot in order to beef up our connectivity because everywhere is the same. Um, it's going to be a major disruption. It's a major disruption in, in education and it's a disruption that we thought was going to happen four, five, six years from now. But now it's here. You can't help but uh, cope with the things that are happening in the world today and right now everybody's doing it and if you won't be able to catch the the bandwagon then you're already too late number six this is the cyclone making landfall slamming into india's coast during a pandemic i think this happened also to us but imagine it's also happening in India, a heavy hit already because of the increasing COVID-19 cases over there. And now they've been hit by a cyclone and that was terrible, right? Look at those. Oh, just like in the Philippines. Cyclone makes landfall. The shelters are filling and COVID-19 is another danger. A million Rohingya refugees are at risk. Oh, look at the look at the flooding! My gosh. Number five, U.S. stocks rise, but this is about forty-two minutes ago. Um, major indices jumped in the morning trading uh, as investors weigh the latest batch of corporate earnings and they decided maybe you know yes we were hit but not that 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 much and it looks like you know we're still we're still in shape so the stocks rise as investors look into the earnings of corporate america if you will notice uh, dow jones up 1.8 percent s p 500 up 1.94 percent Nasdaq up 2.22 percent uh, Russell 2000, 3.36%, and this is in Europe as we speak. FTSE 1.2% today, DAX, Germany 1.54, France up 0.91, Euro stocks 1.05, and FTSE uh, MIB 1.15%. In Asia, Nikkei up 0.79, Hang Seng 0.05, Shanghai down 0.51%. Sensex is up 2.06 despite the, the typhoon. S&P, ASX in Australia is up 0.24%. So it seems that the stock market is performing well today. China's new outbreak shows signs that the virus could be changing. 
what it says here is that the patients in the new cluster take longer to show symptoms and longer to recover. So still uncertainty over the virus mutation is hindering control efforts. Remember that uh, China, in China, when, when China uh, uh, recalled some of the places uh, that are already uh, released from quarantine, and uh, began quarantining, uh, doing the quarantine again for its uh, population, especially in the northern provinces of Jilin and Heilongjiang. Uh, they now notice that uh, it takes uh, the, the carrying of the virus takes longer period of time and take longer to test negative, which is. You know, it takes the whole fighting coronavirus to a different level. But I think the the best thing about this is now China is is sharing now to the world immediately as it happens. You know, because before when they tried to hide this, look at what happened. So I think, uh, well, this is scary, but uh, at least uh, we're doing something about it. Number three today are some economic indicators that we see in tradingeconomics.com for the Philippines led by the business confidence. It decreased to 22.3 points in the first quarter of 2020 from 40.2 in December. So that's from 40.2 to 20. It's a major slip down, but it also happened in the beginning of 20, in, in the fourth quarter of 2019, also in 2012, and biggest is after the 2008, uh, the financial crisis, and again in 2002, the, the World Trade Center bombing and all that. Uh, so um, it's not the lowest. It has been also negative in 2009, in 2006, 2005, 2002, 2001. So uh, if it goes below to the 20 mark, then it's the first time that it will breach that point uh, for 10 years. The lowest that it, it went there was during, you know, after the, the financial crisis of 2008. One of the bellwether for um, economy, you know, uh, economics in the Philippines and, and eventually stock market is the capacity utilization in the Philippines, which decreased by just a bit from February to March, 84.56 to 84.45. We don't have yet the data for April and May. Depending on that, you will see what will happen in the next couple of um, uh, months at least uh, but with this kind of uh, utilization in the Philippines this is still okay I mean it seems that there's still econo economic activity going on here also for manufacturing production it's now down 11.3 percent year-on-year in March of 2020 uh, in February, it was just down by 1%, down January by 4.6%, December is what well, it was a 6.9%. The, the worst in the past uh, at least five years was in April 2019 when it went down 11.8%. And, you know, remember, we are this is just the report of March. Let's see what happens in April and May. But of course, uh, it is incomparable to all the previous data because we are in a lockdown situation. Over at Consumer Confidence, and this is usually negative in the past, but uh, now we just decrease by just a small, tiny bit. 1.31 to 1.26 in uh, the first quarter of 2020 if you notice uh, in the previous years this is usually negative it's the only time that i saw this positive just a couple of uh, um, quarters ago and then sometime in 2017 and then it went down again in 2019. So this is usually ne negative. Uh, consumers were more optimistic about their family's financial condition, but less confident with the country's economic conditions. So I think everywhere in the world is like that. And uh, 
uh, we will be um, so special if we will not feel the same way as the world so what about the others inflation rate I don't know maybe it will not be affected so much because there's no you know jobs are few inflation rate fell to 2.2 percent as expected if you uh, study the Phillips curve is really like that unemployment what about unemployment we don't have unemployment here so labor unemployment and employment rate okay it increased to 5.3 but this is somewhat uh you know the the curve is not that uh good as presented because if you present it in a uh, like in this case since 1995 you will see that although there's an uptick in uh, unemployment rate it's still better compared to many many years of uh, unemployment uh, rates but still we don't have April and we don't have May uh, although it's incomparable compared to the previous years we can we can still look at it in order to see where we are right now okay number two after easing quarantine rules government now eyes lockdown spur barangay and this is going to be very difficult I mean difficult to to achieve um, if they do this it will complicate the local government because the local government will now be in charge of determining which barangays is in lockdown or not it's a really confused um, people you know like what if you're from a barangay that's in lockdown and then you're going to work on a barangay that is not in lockdown so critically you know literally we're saying that everybody's in lockdown especially if this is in manila i mean how can you do this i mean it's 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 complicated enough to put different cities on different situation different quarantine rules much more per barangay you know this is going to be bad but you know well the, the government may have a reason for doing this because if they don't do this then you are left with either prolonging the uh, quarantine again or putting us back to uh, ECQ or uh, letting everybody you know in the, in the process letting everybody not work or releasing everybody to work so that you know so that you can uh, uh spur the economy already and and you know earn some money for yourself uh, so we are in, in deep trouble so we really have to do something in order to lower down the cases because if not then he be, you know this this will only mean that this is this is this is will make things complicated especially in the local government level Especially if I'm a mayor, for example, and there's so many barangays under me, how would you decide which one to put into quarantine and which one not to put into quarantine? I'm sure you will have a problem into identifying those things. And, of course, there will be issues. Why did you choose this over this, you know? It's gotta be hellish out there. So, you know, I don't know. Let's stick around what will happen, but I, I just hope that this doesn't push through this is going to be very hard number one for me it's the COVID-19 cases topping 13,000 it's it's a huge milestone and it's breached already today May 20 as we go past the 13,000 mark Recoveries is at 2932, but uh, the, the, the concerns are, of course, the expanded testing. What do you mean by that? We are now not calling it uh, mass testing, but expanded testing that is targeted. Uh, the warning of the second wave and the warning of the third wave, because we are seeing it in other countries that uh, currently uh, opened and uh, ease down their lockdown conditions so these are the things that are battling the minds of filipinos now 
how do we deal with this as we go past 13,000 and still the number of cases a day are still increasing all right that's it for today so let me just enjoy the water as i take a plunge goodbye god bless everybody and god bless the philippine islands my islands